My name is Gabelo Mabalani. At the age of 19, I was a rock star. I had it all, including drugs and alcohol. But you don't have to be a rock star to get addicted. Drug and alcohol abuse is destroying countless lives and communities. Users are desperate for help. They want self-respect. They want to lead normal lives again. They want to kick it. Dear God, I surrender to you who I am, what I have, and what I do. May my life and talents be used in whatever way serves you best. I surrender to you my failures and any pain still in my heart. I surrender to you my success and the hopes that they contain. May the light of your love shine deep within my heart and extend through me to bless the world. Amen. Is that one going to fit you? No, definitely not. And so where's that going? Yeah, to charity. Charity? Yeah. I think it's important to let these things go. It reminds me of active addiction. I think so. Where was this one from? Um, I wore to my one modelling event. My old clothes represents a lot of bad memories. Yeah, it kind of brings me back to the places I used to be and reminds me that I'm a different person now because I wouldn't dress the way I used to. These shorts <laughs> would never fit me. Aaron, I'd prefer if you didn't wear them, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> Neither would these anymore. And Jodie's not going to wear them either, huh? No. <laughs> I'm living with my dad now instead of my mum because after my stepdad committed suicide and everything like that, um, my mom couldn't afford us anymore. But I think also if I did go to rehab and my mom could afford us, I think I'd still live here because it's just better for me. Because um, with my mom, I get my way. I'm manipulated very well. I can't do the same with my dad. Okay, so these shoes I went through and I found some of your old paraphernalia in this shoe. I see Cabela's about to arrive, so let's go outside and greet the guy. OK, cool. I'm looking forward to Cabela coming. I think it's good to take me back to the places I used to be to remind myself where, where I was and where I am now. We're at your old house. Yeah. And I obviously want to track the journey in terms of you know, where it all began for you, you know, and uh, where it all started. How does it feel being in these surroundings? It feels hectic. Um, it brings back a lot of memories and a lot of things that have happened. But in the same token, it, it makes me feel good to see how far I've come from ah. the last time I've been here. I mean, the last time I stood right here, I was on the way to rehab three uh -huh. months ago. Okay. So it's good to be back in a different light. Mm -hmm. Even though you're going back to old places, it, it feels new because you're a new person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, let's check it out. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like it should be a surprise. <laughs> Did you expect, like, surprise? No, oh, it's bad. So bad. Is this you? Yes, in my modeling days. Don't go look at <laughs> but Look at this girl. <laughs> How about hang on a second? No. <laughs> Do you know I know this girl? <laughs> Not like no, no. <laughs> but like this is like a teenage girl, young. I was like 11 there. <laughs> yeah. Positive outlook on life. Yeah. What do you see when you see that? I guess innocence mm. and purity, I guess. Did you have an inkling there that you'd end up where you are today? No. Not at all? Mm -mm. I had no idea here at all? No. How soon after this do you reckon it started going wrong? Well, I, I smoked weed like before the, this happened, yeah. Before this picture? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I was smoking weed at 10. This house looks so bad. Oof. Well, how do, what does that say to you, though? I mean, for me, it's like, mm. isn't it the the repercussions of drug use? Yeah, it is. In terms of my stepfather, because mm -hmm. he committed suicide, yeah, and the bank in, took in this, our in this very house. Yeah, um, the bank took our house away. That's why we had to move out. Oh, okay. Yeah. The thing that I hate the most with 
my dad not being the best father when I was younger was that he splits our family up and everything that came along with that, like my stepfather killing himself, like I, I wouldn't have to go through that if my mom and my dad were still married. Um, yeah, for splitting the family up, not giving us an upbringing with like a family. Your stepfather's a, also abused drugs, yeah, right? and alcohol. Do you think, do you blame him for where you're at? You know, when I started smoking weed and I was using cat, um, I was 11, 12 then. Um, everyone knew Kirsten does what she needs to do. I was good in my sports and my academics and no one really had to push me to do anything. Mm. So when his addiction started spiraling out of control, the focus was put more on him and they didn't see me slipping. Okay. So I don't blame him for that, but like it, it is a big, he was a big distraction to me going down and mm. not being noticed. But then eventually like, it took me in a dark place and you know, I did. I did need attention and no one really understood why I was in the place I was from being in a really good place and good with school, good in academics to like the school suspending me, getting mm. expelled. Mm. Yeah, and me just being unhappy. Mm. Okay. Let's show me around. My upbringing and all that kind of stuff contributed to me using. Um, instead of like speaking and dealing with things I would use. No, I just didn't care, hey, I just... You should be using in the house. <laughs> yeah. What I'm trying to reconcile is, this is home. Mm. And, you know, how, how, do you, how do you use, you know, needles at home and, 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 and just discard them, discard of them so, you know, so Careless nonchalantly thing. like this, yeah. And no one said anything to you. When I'm using, like, I'm not this person. Mm. Uh, I don't care about a thing. Bring back memories. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of them, man. Huh? I used to sit there and like I would spike there. Spike in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to take it from the beginning for me. I started smoking weed at like 10. Why did, did you start smoking at such a young age? It was more just an escape because I was unhappy. Mm -hmm. It was, ever since I was a child, I always felt something different. There was always this emptiness and... Mm -hmm. Caused by? I think the way I grew up, uh, my dad really wasn't um, that present mm -hmm. in my life when I was younger. My mom did the best she could, mm -hmm. but, you know, she then she married my stepfather and things like, with their marriage, got out of control. The relationship with my mom was really bad. Um, I think she, because I lived with her and she was the one closest to me, I hurt her the most. Um, had no respect for her. I felt like she owed me something because of my upbringing. She'd give me money knowing what I'm gonna go buy. Um, like she'd see me go to the dealer. She would um, take me to house parties at a young age. She'd let me do my own thing. Um, I always got my way. Circumstances at home and family life, it does, it does make a big impact sure. to why we do use. So, and then obviously that leads you to this crowd of people that seem to accept you for who you are. Yeah. And nothing is like, off yeah. limits and then... The rest of the black sheep, yeah. yeah. You're using sounds like... You were dealing with so much. And it was almost like self-medication yeah. to like be able to deal. Yeah. I mean, even at a tender age of 11. Yeah. You're dealing with so much and drugs yeah. were a form of medi Escape. medication for you not to feel. Yeah. There's the affordability aspect. You're 17 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, you know, 11. You're having to score. Yeah. <laughs> That's money. You don't work. Yeah. So who's supporting the habit? I started stealing when um, my mom stopped giving me money or I stopped having availability with her card and all that kind of stuff. So I'd have to steal to to get my drugs. I mean, I stole everything from everyone. Like, no, no one in this family had any valuables left. Just close to the end of last year, um, started escorting and, yeah, getting into, like, selling my body for drugs. Yeah. It, it didn't get too bad, but I mean, it doesn't have to, it's bad as it is. Sure. For escorting, so sometimes you wouldn't just have, you didn't have to sleep with them. But you'd go away for like the weekend and you'd just be like their girl that's mm. with them. And then you'd get like 15K for a weekend. Yeah. And that's how I made my money. 
I mean, you recant, you know, you recant your stories about escorting and stealing with, with such ease. Is it easy for you to share that stuff? It's not easy, but it's the reality of it, I think. Um, to drugs take you. It takes you, you, you're willing to do whatever. Mm. And in that moment, all you care about is the next hit, the next fix. How are you feeling about Dubai? I'm starting to get excited. I think I'm going to miss you, though. <laughs> Making sure that you're looking after yourself. Recovering from the disease of heroin addiction requires constant determination and a regime of prescribed medication. I want you to take me from the beginning in terms of when you started seeing, you know, behavioral changes in Kirsten's life and uh, how we've gotten you know, to today. Where I first started to notice a change is probably when she transitioned from primary school and into her first year of high school. Her marks started dropping slightly. Suddenly she was going to parties or sleep outs at, at friends' places. Yeah, my mom used to take me to like house parties and all that kind of stuff and she'd have to fetch me like early because I was really, really drunk. Um, so yeah, she enabled me a lot. So yeah, I used to get very drunk. I think as things progressed, um, I remember quite clearly the day, it was a Saturday, when I went to my, my ex-wife Jean, gave me a phone call, I had to shoot through to the house in Rand Park Ridge. There was a problem with Kirsten. Kirsten's stepdad at that point, Paul, was still alive. Um, so my ex and Paul were there together. Kirsten was at the house. They wouldn't tell me over the telephone what the problem was. I shot through to the house. On arrival there, I was told that Kirsten was caught smoking weed. It obviously escalated from the marijuana? Yeah, from, from, from there it escalated to a point where she went to Crescent Clinic where she was misdiagnosed. So, so they had a program there for teenagers. They called it YAPS, Young Adult Program. And they diagnosed her with depression. And she went there for what was meant to be 21 days. Um, it wasn't depression um, the child was using. After my first suicide attempt, um, they obviously took bloods. I was unconscious, so they didn't know what happened. So they took bloods and they could see that I was using drugs. And then the doctor actually told my mom and my dad that, well, my, my mom, that it was only weed and they found traces of other things. So my dad thought I was only smoking weed at that stage. So then he fetched me, took me to Northgate and we spoke in the car and oh, he gave me a lecture and told me like his life. And yeah, so I only owned up to smoking weed, but it was a whole lot more. From there, it just escalated. Then she came out of there, we would have a stint of one or two weeks clean, three weeks clean, three months clean, whatever the time frame was. Then it would be back into an institution, out of the institution. She progressively used more and more cat and then moved on to, to meth, crystal meth, in the form of injecting herself. I was on my own mission and like at that time, like as long as I had my drugs, I didn't need anything or anyone else. So I was okay. So I was very disrespectful with it. Like my little sister would run around with my needles and yeah, I wouldn't really care. I changed as a person when I first started using, um, I think in terms of isolating myself because I, I felt guilty and knew I was doing wrong. So before people could tell that I was using, they could definitely see that I was hiding something or I wasn't the same person anymore. Um, yeah, I became very depressed and sad and isolated myself from everyone. My grades dropped, um, I stopped playing sports, I, I wasn't as fit. Um, yeah, teachers could tell something was up. <laughs> if I look at a, a young Kirsten and a young, a young Kirsten, I mean, probably before she was 12 years old, she was always very academic, she was very gifted, she didn't have to study a lot to, to ace schooling, things like that, very competitive and she was good at everything she'd done. Fresh out of rehab, it's time for a family reunion. So we're dropping you off at your mom's. I asked her to cage you in. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Hello, mommy. Hello, my darling. <laughs> Kristen! <laughs> Jody. We spent a very, very long day with uh, your daughter yesterday. She told us so much. Let me... This is a question I've been dying to ask you. Do you think you were an enabler to her uh, uh, behaviour? I think I was in denial first that okay. she was using. 
And please explain your denial. Was it, this is not happening to me, I don't want to deal with it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I thought it's just a phase, she'll stop. Maybe she just experimented. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize the severity of, of her addiction mm -hmm. at the time. I didn't know how bad it had become. Mm. I mean, where were you at uh, emotionally? Wow, um, looking back, I, I was a housewife, so I was um, doing the school run for quite a few kids, mm -hmm. looking after a baby, and um, I had a friend who got very ill, and I had to spend quite a bit of time with her. She had cancer, and I would go to um, Durban mm -hmm. and try and help her there. Also, if my stepdad got ill, he also got cancer, he, he passed away and um, my mum had moved into the flatlet that we had on our property. Mm -hmm. So a lot was going on in my life too, mm -hmm. but she was fine and I uh, kind of took my eye off the ball there. Mm. Yeah, I think I put my mum through the most. Um, I was far from a good daughter. Um, yeah, I disrespected her. I didn't really care much about her. Um, she'd stay up all night waiting for me to come home. I wouldn't come home. I'd switch my phone off. And my mom said sometimes, like, she just should stay up at night and just wait for that phone call to say, like, I'm dead or I've overdosed or I'm in trouble. And yeah, I think I, I remember the one she said something to me, like, that sometimes she just wished I would die so I can be out of my misery and. She doesn't have to watch me kill myself every day, slowly. Her dad and I, um, although we divorced, uh, he was always very supportive. We, we we spoke about it amongst ourselves and had we, we tried between us to to get it to stop, and I, I just it, it just didn't help. You know, going to rehab, you think your child's going to come out all fixed, and, and it doesn't happen. Mm. What are you going to do differently now? I mean, do you understand that you have a very, very important role in yes, her fulfilling that? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Boundaries have to be put in place and followed through on. Mm -hmm. um, a structure. Mm. She needs structure. I think we both come to a stage where we're really tired of it now. Enough's enough. What I want for myself is just to be happy, to be the best person I, person I possibly can, to be a good daughter to my, my mom and my dad, um, to be a good sister to my brother and my little sister and just be a good person in life and get far and be a winner again like when I was young I used to have lots of dreams ambitions and goals and I kind of lost that through active addiction so I think just getting my life back and yeah, you know, becoming successful I'm waiting to hear from my dad but I want to do some work there at his dealership just for something in the meantime until I find something else mm -hmm. but yeah I definitely want to get a job get going and yeah, I'll keep myself busy, start earning money. Mm. <laughs> gym? Yeah, I've been gymming with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, pretty hard. It's been good. Helps with my mental state. That's keeps good. me focused. Natalie is also an ex-drug addict. After a stint in rehab, she helped Kirsten through some very tough times. But their relationship didn't start off well. Kirsten and I actually met at Tranquility. I was in Tranquility and she came for a meeting and to visit her ex-boyfriend at the time and that's how we actually met. Mm -hmm. We didn't like each other then. Mm -hmm. um, we only started liking each other when we, when I was out of Why rehab. Why didn't you like each other? I'm allowed to swear on you. <laughs> 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 and her ex and I actually became like brother and sister in rehab. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously being the jealous, you know girls, jealousy, what well, even mm. guys, jealousy, um, yeah, she took also that kind of a perspective. And how did you guys get around that? Well, we didn't. We just said hello to each other in rehab, and mm -hmm. that was it. It was only outside of rehab that we actually became very good oh, friends. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, OK. We were actually at Crescent Clinic for both. We were both there for a meeting, and, like, I've been brought up not to be rude, so I knew I and I said hello to her, and we just, yeah, took off from there. Like, I'll always hold on to our friendship because she played a huge role in my, like, in my recovery and helping me get to where I am now. Um, but yeah, things are different now. Like, I, I can't really relate to her. Um, yeah, she, she helped me a lot, but I think, I don't know, like, I just, I can't relate to her anymore. Do you think she was serious about her rec recovery at that time? No. Not? No. I mean, she would be, you know, in godforsaken places, uh, places that a 15-year-old shouldn't be, 15, <laughs> 16, 17-year-old yeah. shouldn't be and uh, you'd be the one driving out 
odd hours of the morning going to look for her? Yeah. Um, would she communicate with you? Yeah, like, um, Kristen would off open up to me and so I knew exactly where she was and stuff, but sometimes her mom would call me and say, this is what's happened. But, like, I knew exactly her places that she used to hang out, um, the people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. hence why her mom always called me, you mm. know, so I could go get her out of that situation. Mm. So, yeah, she did confide in me in a lot, though. She really did. Well, now that you are kind of fixing your image, we're in Brum, there's actually a nice clothing store. Let's see if we can get you in some cool gear. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Most of us have no real idea of what it means when you're an addict, desperate to change your life for the better. It means giving up all that you have done and starting with a clean slate. For Kirsten and her father, it's letting go of all the baggage and all the damage. That's really cool. I think it's pretty. Is it short? Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's one suit. Nice. One suit, you said? One suit. One suit. So you'll take Sweet. those two. Yeah. We've spent quite a bit of time together. Um, what have you taken out of it? How's the experience been? It's been really awesome. Um, it's been very amazing for me to do, to have this experience and... What about it has been amazing? It's opened my eyes up to what I... It's kind of like I've relived my past in a way, with obviously without using the drugs, but it's kind of like I've, I've been put in situations of like where I was then and if you understand what I mean. Yeah, 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 100%. And... Is it a nice feeling to go back? It's, it's opened my eyes and it's made me see like just how bad things really were and how much I've grown and also how like certain things triggered me and I couldn't clean up because of certain things and like the family dynamics and my stepfather passing and like there's things that stood out for me a lot sure. that I, I now understand. I sometimes, oh, when I think of how much money I wasted on drugs, my goodness, I want to cry sometimes. Yeah. And and look, I'm clean, I'm clean <laughs> sad, for 14 right? years. I still get sad about it. It now, is sad. I, I literally have to pull myself out of the sadness because mm. it's like flip. You know? Because like yeah. make, making money is I always say making money is easy. Keeping it is a difficult part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll come to my one I year. I hope this is not the last time we see each other. I'll no. definitely come to your one year. You I have should, to. I should come to a few meetings. I think it's still good for me to go to meetings as well. You need to. Yeah. Actually. I do. I'll tell you why I like going to meetings. It reminds you. Yeah, when you see, when someone says they're like three days clean and how broken they still are, yeah. it reminds me of where I come from. Yeah. Kirsten is doing everything she can to stay clean. She knows that if she relapses again, she will die. So she lives her life one day at a time, trying to do normal things that she's never done before. She doesn't take a moment for granted. She is living proof that if you want it badly enough and try hard enough, it's possible to kick it. <laughs> 